Hello world and hello what country, it's me Simon Miller and I'm here today to bring you another little episode of Ups and Downs for Raw where we give the good bits an up and we give the good bits a down because the clue is in the name but I still like explaining these things at the start of the video. Now there seems to be a lot of negativity out there today so all I'm going to say is this, no matter what happens, if you put a smile on your face, nothing can break like the armour you put ahead of yourself. So I got a big smile, which means I'm wearing armour, so whatever comes my way, pew, like off like a bullet, like a bullet coming off some steel. I'm steel and you're the bullet or something. Anyway, let's ups and downs. Now, given that Brock Lesnar wasn't on the show properly, although we will get to him later, WWE finally had the bright idea to showcase and highlight the IC title, and I thought it worked out very well, so it's getting it up. Now, the long and the short of this was that, yes, at no mercy, we are going to see The Miz versus Jason Jordan. And while the whole Jason Jordan experiment isn't really working because no one actually believes he is the son of Kurt Angle, he, as a wrestler, in the ring, and kind of the promos he cut and the intensity he had, was very good. So he has proven that he knows what he's doing, he just needs a better storyline and gimmick. Anyway, Raw did start off with all of this, and we had Kurt Angle, we had The Miz, and The Miz was all like, this is preposterous, why don't I have a match for the IC title at No Mercy? And he was right, he is the Intercontinental Champion, that's an important title, therefore he should have a match at the Raw pay-per-view, and Kurt Angle was like, fine, and there was a lot of sort of back and forth and nonsense, but eventually we did find out we were getting a six-pack challenge, and it was going to have a bunch of people in it, like the Hardys, and Jason Jordan got added, and there were, you know, the Miz and all that nonsense, but it was quite clear who was going to win this from the start. And then if we fast forward to the end of the show, we got that match, and yes, Jason Jordan did win, and he pinned Curtis Axel, and then the Miz beat the crap out of him afterwards. But the most important thing here was that Jason Jordan came across well, even though, again, no one really cared about him, and The Miz continues, no pun intended, to be awesome. And maybe, just maybe, this is the start of lighting up the IC title again. Please, 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 it would be a good idea. What is getting it down this week, though, is the women's stuff, because to be honest, it was bonkers this week. Downright bonkers. So not only do we have a match between Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss, which I thought WWE had been building to for ages, and Nia Jax just won, so that's that feud dead, if you ever want to do it, Bailey came back from nowhere, had her hand raised by Sasha Banks, because after the Jax Bliss match, everyone involved in the match at No Mercy ran out and just had a big hoo-ha. But now it is a five-way match at No Mercy, because Bailey's in it, and Emma barely doesn't exist anymore. This was really weird. There's no two ways about it. All of it was really weird and didn't serve anyone. I mean, it pretty much jobbed Emma out, no end. And I would guess that Bailey got told, hey, you can come back early. So WWE just thought, oh well, Emma's in it, but screw it, we can move her to the side, kinda, and showcase Bailey again. This was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. I don't know what they're gonna do at the pay-per-view. A five-way women match could be good. There is a lot of talent in that ring, but yeah. Nuts. We switch back to the apps though, because yes, now it's time to talk about everything between Braun Strowman and Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. Because of all that, definite up. Not only did we get a great promo package, which did underline how awesome Braun Strowman has been, and also reminded us how awesome Brock Lesnar used to be when he was a rookie, but then we had a sit-down interview between the two that was hosted by Michael Cole, and I thought that was sweet too. Didn't really do anything out of the ordinary, but there was an intensity here, and I believe what both men were saying, and Heyman was getting mad, and Strowman didn't back down, and then Brock Lesnar actually talked and called Braun a bitch, it was awesome. I liked it, and now I can't wait to see the main event, even though I do think Brock Lesnar's gonna win, and that's fine, but please protect Braun Strowman. As we know, Braun Strowman is the new greatest man in the world, and if you are the greatest man in the world, you should be protected. I kind of like the tag team stuff on Raw this week, even though it has started to feel a bit same old, same old, because again, it involved Sheamus and Cesaro, who are now officially called The Bar, so they pushed that catchphrase enough, so it has become their name, obviously the tag champs, Ambrose and Rollins, and then the Good Brothers were there, because the Good Brothers are always willed out, however, it's getting it up. Now it started with a big discussion, and Sheamus was running everybody down, so then Ambrose and Rollins came out and they shook their fist, then the Good Brothers came out and they shook their other fist, and of course we had a triple threat match again, now, I'm pretty sure we've seen that last week and the week before, and I could be wrong, but that does mean we've seen it too much. And guess who took the pin? That's right, Gallows and Anderson. It was entertaining though, and while it kind of did feel like it was just there to fill things before we get to No Mercy and we get the tag team title rematch, it was fun. I enjoyed myself. I'm not going to knock on stuff like that. And if once this is done, we can actually light up some other tag teams, then the Raw division is going to be in great shape. My worry is... We don't have any other teams. Which brings us to Kurt Hawkins. Now, Kurt Hawkins' new gimmick 
is that he loses a lot. And he came out this week and said, that changes today. I'm changing my whole shtick. So someone came down to the ring. And Apollo Crews came down. Kurt Hawkins lost in about two minutes. However, gonna give it an up. Now, the reason for this is because I do find Kurt Hawkins, well, I think he's a lot of fun. I don't know what it is. And even though they're jobbing him out to ridiculous levels, he gets on TV. He's getting more airtime than he has in years. And yeah, I think Kurt Hawkins is really talented. And also, at least we put Apollo Crews over. I mean, we're not going to build on this, so it's going to be pointless, and Apollo Crews is going to become a ghost again. As we said before, Apollo Crews is featured to such a little degree that right now he may as well be a ghost, like Mickey James. Mickey James and Apollo Crews could team up and be the ghosts, they just don't appear. But there was something here, and I don't quite know what it was, but I was sat there watching Raw, and I thought, I think I'm entertained. If I'm entertained, everything's all right. You're not going to believe this either, but we had the continuation of the Bray Wyatt and Finn Balor stuff, and I continued to enjoy it. So it's getting it up. The main reason for this, of course, is because Goldust is involved and Goldust is just such a talented performer. And here, he was just Dustin Rhodes. Took his face paint off, got all serious with Kurt Angle. He's like, look, I need another match with Bray Wyatt to prove myself. And of course he had the match and he lost because WWE sees him as persona non grata. Also, that protege idea is completely dead. However, he's that damn good, he makes me care. And after all this too, Finn Balor cut, uh, well, it wasn't a great promo, but it was decent enough, and it tied into the story and this whole, you wear a mask, there's a man behind the mask, you need to be scared about all these people with masks. Well, it was all right, and for the first time in this whole thing, I actually understand where both men are coming from. So that, to me, is wonderful. Now, don't get me wrong, could still be better, but if it's going up, it gets enough. And now it's time to talk about Roman Reigns. And just to sum it up as quickly as possible, and put it in a nice little package with a bow on it, this was the best Roman Reigns has ever been. That's so getting it up. Taking advantage of the fact that Cena wasn't on Raw, because he's off on a Chinese tour or whatever he's doing, Roman Reigns came out and he hit all the big points, including alluding to that whole hoopla with Alex Riley that happened a few years ago. And there's so much hoopla there, we don't even know the ins and outs. We know that something went down between John Cena and Alex Riley, but even Alex Riley has always said in interviews, I'm not talking about this now, I'll talk about it when the time is right. So maybe that's now. But it does open a giant window for us, the smart asshole fans, to look through and go, yes, something did happen there. And aside of that, Reigns was just good here. He was just good. He sounded aggressive. He sounded on point. He ran Cena down. He was obviously helped because Cena wasn't there to retort, and that's usually where he kind of, he can't handle that, basically. Reigns freaks out, but it doesn't matter. He took advantage of the situation. Two thumbs up. Well done, Roman. I'm proud of you. And also, I can't wait for that match. I hope Roman Reigns does win, because John Cena, as Roman said, is going to go off and film more movies with The Rock, whatever he's doing. Reigns could actually benefit from this. Let's hope he benefits. Naturally, as well, we are going to give all the tribute stuff to Bobby Heenan and up. It was terrible news when it broke over the weekend. The man was a legend. He was one of the reasons I started watching wrestling. His wit and his comedy and the way he presented itself was like nobody else. It was great. Got me emotional. Small tear in my eye. Bobby Heenan, thanks for everything. WWE, good stuff. Up. And then clearly WWE thought we needed some levity because they sent Enzo Amore to come out and cut one of his usual promos and then said, <laughs> no you don't Enzo, here comes Braun Strowman. Up. Braun came out, he looked at Enzo, and then he utterly destroyed him. Now why they felt the need to do this, I don't know, although I think I do, is because Enzo has so much backstage heat. Now Raw has just become their personal playground to bury him wherever they can. But it doesn't matter, because I got to see a huge man utterly destroy a very small man, and that just looked cool. I know that sounds bad, but it looked really good. I mean, it jobbed Enzo out, and so you know, doing that kind of jobbed out the Cruiserweight division too. But in terms of this segment, it was really good, but yeah, throw it down in there because this did nothing for the Cruiserweights. And what we're also going to throw it down in there for is what followed, which was a 205 live match between Neville and Grand Metalik. Now, it's getting it down because one, this should be a program that we build to WWE. Neville's amazing. Grand Metalik's amazing. You underuse him anyway. You should have put time and effort into this. And two, it was just thrown on a random episode of Raw, and then there was a big malfunction with Grand Metalik's mask, and we basically saw his face. So now that's all. That's all said and done. It's just like all Cruiserweight matches on Raw now. Just feels like it's there because it has to be there. Although I do hope that Enzo and Neville get some time at the pay-per-view. And I hope that Enzo loses. I don't want to see him as 205 Live Champ. A final up for all the Oscar vignettes though. WWE are genuinely treating like a megastar. If you don't watch NXT and you don't know who she is, hopefully all those video packages are letting you know she is a big deal. So when she does turn up to Raw, you should care. And if you don't, well at least they tried. So yeah, that's enough. 
And I thought it was a decent episode of Raw, to be honest. We're now leading into No Mercy, which is this Sunday. I'm excited about it. And we've got two amazing matches that should be of WrestleMania quality, or so we'd hope. So yeah, happy days. Now don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you thought about last night's Raw. Like, share and subscribe. Head on over to whatculture.com, read some articles. Follow What Culture on Twitter and What Culture WWE. My name is Simon from What Culture, and one more time, I'm always smiling. I'm always smiling.